Hey guys, this is Agent Mindstorm, and welcome back to my Bedrock Edition resource pack tutorial. Today, we're going to learn the basics of sounds. If you don't have the default resources downloaded yet, watch the Getting Started video in the playlist in the description first. You also need to know correct JSON structure, so watch the animated textures tutorial until the JSON tutorial is over. Once you have the default resources and the knowledge of JSON, we can start the sound tutorial. Bedrock Edition sounds are all located inside the sounds folder in a resource pack. When you open this folder, you'll be greeted by a bunch of subfolders. The names of these folders are pretty much self-explanatory. Inside each folder, you'll find either more subfolders for specific groups of sounds or the sound files themselves. Bedrock's default sound files are FSB files, which as far as I can tell is a file type only used for video game sounds. I couldn't find a program to play them directly, but that's fine because we really don't need to listen to the default game sounds. You can replace the default game sounds with your own sound files using a resource pack. Minecraft will accept .ogg, or .ogvorbis, and .fsb audio files for sounds. Your custom sounds should be in the .ogvorbis format because it's an easier format to modify and convert. It's also the format used by Java Edition. In case your sounds aren't in the correct format, you will have to convert them to OGG with this website, which is linked in the description of this video. The first thing you want to do when converting files is to check the file type of your audio file that you want to convert. By default, the converter assumes your file is mp3. If your audio is in a different format, select the first dropdown in the center of the page and hover over the Audio tab. On the right side of the dropdown, a list of audio file types will appear. Choose the extension that your file is currently, or the converter won't work correctly. The output settings should already be set to OGG if you follow the link from the description. All that's left to do is click on Choose Files, then find your unconverted files on your computer. Open them in the website and press Convert. This process takes a little while because your files have to be uploaded to the site and converted online before you can download them again. When the file finishes processing, download it with the blue download button on the right side of the page. Since we're only replacing the original sound files right now, name your files the same thing as the default sounds. For example, I'm going to replace the villager ambient sounds. In my resource pack, I have to create folders that match the game's default sound structure. So I'll create a folder named Sounds, then another folder named Mob, then another folder named Villager. I'll move my converted sounds to the Villager folder and then rename them to Idle1, Idle2, and Idle3, just like the default sounds. Let's test the pack in game now. If we head to a village, we should hear... Hello, this is an impression of the Element Animation Villager. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later. Yup, that's the sound of my voice coming from the villagers. That means our resource pack is working. But what if I want to add another idle sound for the villager? Three is a low number, and I want to have them be a little more talkative than that. To add more sounds, we're going to have to use a file called sounddefinitions.json. It's located in the sounds folder of the default resources. Copy it into your resource pack so that we can modify and test it. Right-click and open sounddefinitions.json in Notepad++, which we installed in the Animated Textures tutorial. This file connects sound files from a resource pack to events that can be played in-game. Each object inside the sound definitions object is known as an event. The name of the event is what's used in the play sound command in-game. Any event in a resource pack can be played with commands, even if there was no event with that name originally. When an event is played in-game, one of the sounds in its sound array is chosen randomly. Inside of the event object are up to three properties. The category property controls what type of sound the event is considered. Rain and thunder are in the weather category, beehive sounds are in the block category, and zombie sounds are in the hostile category. Here's a full list of accepted category types by the game. Categories are not needed for sounds to work. In fact, there's no difference in the way any category works in-game with the exception of the music and UI categories. Sound events that play music should always be labeled with the category music because the game controls the volume of music and other sounds separately. Sound events that play from UI, such as buttons, will only work in-game if the category is set to UI. 
All other sounds can be left blank, but it's best to assign sounds categories in case the game is updated to use them more in the future. The next property of an event is the sounds array, which we'll talk about more soon. The third property of an event is subtitle. Bedrock Edition doesn't currently have a subtitle option, so this can be safely left alone. In case you do want to add a subtitle though, the subtitle property should be defined by an identifier from the language files. Subtitles really are not necessary for your sounds, so don't worry about not understanding how to do them. The most important property of a sound event is the sounds array. An event will not work without one. Each entry in the sounds array corresponds to one sound file. The entry can be a file path directly to the sound file, or an object with multiple properties for that specific sound file. In an object entry, the property name is defined by the file path to the sound file. The file path starts from the base folder of the resource pack. It's the same one where the manifest is. To type out the file path to a sound file, type all the folders you need to go through to get there starting from the base folder with forward slashes between each folder name. Once the file path has reached the right folder, just type the name of the sound file. Make sure to leave out the file extension. For example, if my sound was called example.ogg, I would just type example in the file path. Other properties that can be applied to each sound file are volume, pitch, stream, and load on low memory. Volume and pitch are both set to 1 by default. Stream and load on low memory are false by default. If you were to type the file path directly into the sounds array, it would have the same effect as this object with a volume of 1, a pitch of 1, and stream and load on low memory set to false. The volume property controls how loud the sound is in-game. The pitch property controls the speed and, well, pitch of the sound. A higher pitch makes the sound faster. The stream property controls how the sound is played by the game. If it's false, the game will load the whole file before playing it. This should be set to true for large sound files and sound files over 10 seconds long to help prevent lag on low-end devices. The load on low memory property, when set to true, will make the sound file a priority sound, which will make it load even if the player's device has very little memory remaining. This should be left false 99% of the time. Only extremely important sounds such as the a creeper is about to explode sound should be set to true. Let's add a few extra sounds to the villagers now. Our job is really easy because there's already a sound event for ambient villager sounds. The first thing we're going to do is control F for that event. The simplest thing to search for is villager, so that's what we'll do. You'll notice that the event we found is named mob.villager.death, which is not the right one. Luckily for us, sound events for entities are usually grouped together. Right under the death event is haggle, then hit, then idle. Idle is the one we want to modify. Since we're adding new sound files to the event, we should copy an existing file path line and paste it under the original sound file paths. Here we have to be careful with the commas to make sure they are correctly formatted for a JSON list of properties. We can delete the name of the sound file at the end of the file path because we're replacing it with a new sound. Our new sound is named welcome underscore to underscore my underscore village dot ogg, so we'll type welcome underscore to underscore my underscore village at the end of the file path. I have one more sound file to add to the event, but I want it to play at a higher pitch in-game than it is in the file. To do that, we have to make the entry in the sounds array an object. As with all JSON objects, we can type the opening and closing curly brackets and then fix our commas in the array before we add any properties to the object. Between our curly brackets, we'll add the most important property, name, and define it with the file path to the sound. Like we did with the first added sound, we'll copy an existing file path to start with. This time, we're going to paste it as a definition of our name property. The name of the sound file this time is LemonadeStand.ogg, so we'll delete the previous sound name and replace it with LemonadeStand. For that higher pitch, we'll add the pitch property under name and define it with the number 1.25. This sound will now play with a pitch that is 25% higher than the original file. We're not quite done, though. Since this sound file is more than 10 seconds long, we're going to stream it so low-end devices will not lag because of it. After pitch, we should add the stream property and define it with true. Remember that in JSON, true and false do not need quotation marks around them. Now let's test it in game. I'll go up to the villagers and. Thank you for watching. And I... Hello, this is the version of the element animation. That's weird. They aren't making the welcome to our village or lemonade stand sounds. This is a great opportunity to show a useful way to find errors you might have made in your JSON code, though, so let's do it. We're going to go to a website called JSONLint. The URL is jasonlint.com, which is linked in the description of this video. 
This website will help you figure out if your JSON is written correctly. Copy all the text in the sounddefinitions.json file and paste it into the large text box on JSONlint, then press validate JSON. A quick note here, if your file has any comments in it, which for Minecraft look like a double forward slash in the normal text, it will be counted as invalid by JSONlint. This is because JSON doesn't normally support comments, but Minecraft has added the ability to use comments as it's useful in more advanced JSON. If JSONlint picks up a comment in your file as an error, just delete the comment in JSONlint and leave it in your file, then press validate JSON again. If we look at the line that JSONlint brought us to, we can see that the comma that should be at the end is missing. Let's add that comma into our sounddefinitions.json file and on JSONlint and try validating it again. This time, JSONlint found nothing wrong with it and said it's valid JSON. Now you can close JSONlint and save your file. Let's test it in-game again. Hi there, I'm running with to our like to village. For Johnny's items, please. The I first have been item chosen to go to the land of the Xbox. lemonade itself. It is costing at I least 10 cents. Thank, Thank you for watching. Lemonade. This time, the villagers are all talking about lemonade stands and welcoming us to their village. That's great, because it means that the sounds are working. That's going to be the end of this tutorial, but for now, I do want to tell you all. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later.